the lengths of Angelo Ogbonna's injury and Andre Yarmolenko's injury have come back. What kind of impact will this have on West Ham? Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more West Ham videos. Now, Angelo Ogbonna is going to be out for a month, and this is a huge blow to the way we're going forward because it seems like the last couple of days, the, the game against Manchester United, the game against Fulham, the building box of the, what has been going so well for West Ham in terms of the way we've been defending, the way we've been attacking. And the reason why we're sitting sixth place in the Premier League seems to be just sort of falling off. And Angelo Ogbonna is out for one month. He sustained a very nasty ankle injury in that game against Manchester United. There's been a lot of talk in regards to should it be a red card? Should it be a foul? For me, it was completely not intentional. Martial covers the ground. He has a shot. Angelo Ogbonna matches the ground covered by Martial blocks and unfortunately it was just a follow through it was one of those things it was a collision in football it does happen and for me there was no malice in it and no intent, intent by Anthony Martial could have been a foul but people talking about whether it was a red card it's just not a red card he, he has a shot Ogbonna uh, clears it unfortunately gets caught now you know, come, when he got injured, I was very concerned because we didn't know how West Ham gonna, were going to react to losing their key centre-back and the way we were going to sort of rally around in the defence. However, the emergence of Craig Dawson, he brought that leadership still in that back line. So there's not just one leader in Ogbonna. You've got another leader in the, that defensive line in Craig Dawson. And Craig Dawson, for large spells of that Manchester United game, was absolutely phenomenal. And he was the one that sort of took charge where he sort of a bit of Ogbonna and Craig Dawson that sort of do the communicating Cresswell tuck in Sufal tuck in go out wide press them but it was Craig Dawson that was the one that sort of led led by example and he was absolutely fantastic and whilst I was concerned with Ogbonna because he's going to be a huge miss he has been hammered a year along with Thomas Suchek in my opinion because of the emergence of Craig Dawson you know, I'm still confident that we can sort of keep moving forward, that we can still keep keep clean sheets, we can still keep on move, moving forward with points on the board, starting off with Sheffield United, and we saw for large parts of that Manchester United game that we were defending well in a four and in a back five. So whilst it is a huge blow, because Al Bonner, he's been rewarded with his fine form this season with a call up to the international Italian international team. So the national manager is noticing how well he's doing for West Ham, and you've got defenders such as Chiellini, Bonucci, players of that ilk, you know, that play for that Italian squad, but they're picking a player from West Ham and Ogbonna. So it's just credit to him and how well he has done. He sort of built on that form that he had post lockdown last season. Now, Andre Yarmolenko, his one's a little bit more serious than Ogbonna. Yarmolenko was the backup to. Mikhail Antonio because we didn't sign a striker and we know my opinions on it a lot of people's opinions you know we should have signed a striker or we should have brought someone in at least to cover the void or help get a body in to just try and help Antonio when it comes to rotation but Yandre Yarmolenko is going to looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the season and when this guy picks up injuries he's just one of those players that when they pick up injuries they're never really short term they're always you know medium to long term and this guy because we're sitting in February the middle of February February, looks like Yarmolenko is going to be out for the rest of the season. Now, what kind of impact does this have on West Ham? Because Antonio, Antonio is our only, you know, sort of striker. He, at the moment, he's not always 100% fit. It looks like he could be available for Sheffield United. Then we've got Odebeku. The When he come on, he sort of didn't do much. He got taken off. So Odebeku is probably not ready for Premier League football, not ready to sort of battle physically with Premier League experienced defenders. So for me, where do we move forward? We've got to try a couple of things. If we're not going to go in the free agent market and sign Costa and sign Sturridge, and I know some people are not fans of the old free agent. I know G doesn't want a free agent he sort of wants to continue with this and, I, and I, I can get I fully understand his point but I just feel like we need another body in there maybe address the free agent we just need another body so that Antonio can be rotated otherwise he's probably going to be playing 90 minutes or 80 minutes every single game that he is available for but what else can we do? If we're not going to sign a striker, what else can we do? For me, I'd like to maybe see Bowen up front. Someone who hasn't been fantastic as of, as of late. Apparently, there are some niggling injuries that are causing Jared Bowen problems. However, he's got a little bit of pace. He's not the most rapid. He's not the most rapid player in the world, but he's a lot quicker than a lot of our forwards that we've actually got or a lot of our attacking players in that sort of in those attacking positions. 
what he would do. He works hard, fits what Antonio does, works hard for the team, sometimes sacrifices their own personal gain for the greater good of the side. He will run, run wide. He will stretch defensive defences, similar to, um, to Jesse Lingard. Moyes has already spoken about that Jesse Lingard could potentially play as a false number nine. Now, in terms of the false number nine position that is being spoken about, the false number nine position is mainly for teams that are possession orientated. You know, the, the false number nine drops in deep. Then you've got attacking wide players that attack that space where defenders follow that false number nine. Essentially, Firmino, he drops deep. Salah and Mane attack the spaces that are being left behind. And are we that kind of team yet? No, but maybe that's the long-term vision of David Moyes. He wants to be more possession-orientated. And maybe we could try it in the coming games against Sheffield United, where we're probably expected to have more possession. We could maybe have Jesse Lingard up front as a false number nine, and, and maybe Ben Rama and, and Jared Bowen on either wing trying to attack those spaces in behind that Sheffield United defence. So that's a possible, possible option. Um, but for me... For me, I would probably just go out and just try and bring in, you know, a free agent because we can't keep on converting wide players to strikers. It's not always going to work out. You, you, you sort of need certain characteristics in order to pull off that sort of striker role. It's not just any striker role. It's a lone striker role. You're expected to run in behind. You're expected to sort of hold off defenders and chest the ball down and bring players and bring other players into play. Antonio can do it fantastic because he's got the physical attributes. Same with Marko Anatovic when he was converted into a wire player into a striker. Do Jared Bowen, does Jared Bowen have that? No, not necessarily. Does Jesse Lingard have those characteristics in bringing in the ball down? Can you see him running, you know, winning a flick on for uh, another attacking player to, to run onto the ball? Can you see him being the ball played to his chest and he's backing into defenders and winning free kicks like Antonio did at Crystal Palace away when we scored our second goal. So for me, there's a lot to think about. Maybe now because of the the, the news of Yarmolenko, we might go into the free agent market. But for me, I probably would just because we need another body. But guys, that is the injury latest. Ogbon is out for a month, but I think Dawson, because of the emergence of Dawson, I think we'll get along okay just about... Obviously, Yarmolenko, it causes issues. Who's going to play up front if Antonio is not injured? Odebeku's not ready. So that is also up for discussion. Hit the subscribe button for more West Ham videos. I'll catch you next time. See you later.